this was my breeding setup. Uh, apologize for any shaking. Um, this is a 90 gallon tank on a, a stand that was made for with a, a hood above it. I kept my male and six females in that tank. If you see the little pieces of PVC pipe that are in there were for the females to be able to hide from the male from when they didn't want to breed. The clay flower pot was what the male would use as his uh, burrow like he would in nature. He would dig a little hole in the side of a bank and that's where he would try to entice a female back to to get her out of the current to lay eggs and such. Now in a tank like this they'll also just dig a hole in the gravel down to the glass and if they can get the female to that hole in the gravel the male will mate wherever he can get a female to follow him to uh, if she's willing to mate or breed. Uh, there's there's pipes in the corner here. There's actually only two that go through the bottom of the tank. Uh, one of them is the solids lift overflow. If you can see up at the top right there where it goes into that T and down, the upper end of the T goes up out of the tank and is open so that no siphon can uh, be created. That way if the water level for some reason drops below, if I have a leak in some of my piping or uh, the sump or something like that, if the water level drops below that T right there, uh, it stops right there because no siphon can be created. The thinner line is an actual overflow uh, that's rigged up at the top that goes down and out. Uh, the solids lift overflow is the part that tees over and drops back down to the bottom so it sucks up off the bottom, so the tank drains off the bottom. It's uh, the same thing, a chiff piss set up, it's all gravity fed. Uh, the gravity water goes down through that pipe, comes over here. I've got ball valves between each one of these little 12 gallon uh, totes right here that are full of gravel. Uh, mint takes over everything. I brought this mint in as a few sprigs a couple months ago and it has completely taken over this grow bed area. But these are my filters. These tanks right here, the water comes into these tanks. They're all linked to one bell siphon right here. So they're all linked through the one bell siphon. They all drain to these two totes down here. This first tote, since I, at times I would have a large number of fry or fingerlings in my breeding system, doubles as a biofilter. I've got some screen material that's crumpled up in there, a few pieces of uh, short cutoffs of PVC and uh, stuff like that that helps hold the screen down, uh, and keeps it under the water. Uh, so it doubles as a biofilter. Uh, water cascades into here, the cascading effect aerates it. Uh, I've got the surface area of the screen material that gives plenty of air for bacteria. Then it'll flow from this upper tank through where it's fed to, to the lower sump, which is just a straight sump with a 400 and, I think it's a 400 gallon per hour pump, but it's got like a four foot lift. Uh, or four foot head, so it really only pumps like 150 gallons an hour or something like that. I don't remember, but it does the job most excellent. It feeds back up into the corner of the tank, back at the back. Uh, I don't know if you can see the bubbles that come down every now and then. There's a fan spray back there that sprays it out in a fan spray, which helps create more friction with the air and aerates better. I've got a bubble bar and a couple bubble stones in there as well. Now this tank would run by itself with nothing else, okay? Um, the male would breed with the females. They would hatch their eggs out in that tank. Uh, but then I have to put screens over everything to keep uh, the fry from winding up in the grow beds or going through the overflow and winding up in the sump and everything else. So I added nursery tanks, like this 20 gallon nursery, or this 20 gallon tank right here uh, these glass tanks are expensive. Uh, the way I had them set up, I drill holes in them. Uh, it's hard to drill a hole through the glass. Okay. So I switched over to 18 gallon totes. A lot easier to drill, the same type setup works. I would take a, a small submersible pump and I would hang it in the back of the tank where it was right up just a couple inches down in the water for the same reason as the T and the uh, solids lift overflow. That way if the water level dropped down, the pump wouldn't just keep on pumping and pump all the water out of the tank like it would if it was in the bottom being suspended up. If the water level dropped more than a couple of inches, boom, 
the pump stops pumping. It might burn the pump up, but I don't have a flood in my house. So then I had this tank and I had two of these totes set up, but that submersible pump was hooked up to this barb fitting to this half inch PVC right here. Now, I had these notched because this actually went down in here and then elbowed back up to go over to the third uh, to, or tank, tote, whatever you want to call it that I had in here. With the barb on there, it would be like this. And if you see those holes right there, those holes are kind of aimed a little down but forward. So as the, the pressure of the water being pumped into it would basically shoot the water in this direction back towards the front of the tank. That helped create a circular current within that tank, the top going this way, bottom going that way and back up, so that the water would circulate through and then drop back down through the overflow. All of my nursery tanks were set up with overflow. All of them had, if you can see the screen over that one, all of them had some screening to keep fry from going through the overflow. Uh, depending on the size of the fry, sometimes I had to use finer mesh uh, as a screen, and if you do that, you have to clean it. I would clean it in the morning, clean it at night, otherwise it will get blocked up and you can overflow. Uh, if that's the case, the best thing to do is make sure you're a couple inches below uh, where you would normally be with your standpipe so that there's more pressure on it. So if it does start to clog up, the water has a chance of keeping on going through instead of just flat out overflowing. But normally within a week, uh, if not within just a few days, the fryer large enough they won't go through regular fiberglass window screening and it, I've never had it clog on me. Um, no matter, even if I let the fingerlings get up to an inch and a half, two inches inside before I transferred them anywhere else, their solids were still not enough to clog the fiberglass screening. But the way the overflows work, like I said, I drill a hole in every tank. Okay. Then there's a one inch drain line that runs back behind this tank and comes back down and feeds into this sump. If you look at this elbow right here, that is that drain line that comes over and down. Okay. That's the drain line for the nursery tanks. Water would be pumped from the main tank to the nursery tanks. It would fill up, overflow into the overflow, down into that drain line, over to the sump. Now, if you, you see the fitting right there, there's one exposed right here. The one inch drain line comes up elbows to the backs of the tanks. There's the one inch, uh, standard one inch uh, electrical PVC fitting adapter with a number 18 O-ring. The O-ring is on the outside of the tank. That way, once I push it through the tank, and I put the inner female adapter, let's see if this light's wired up now. Put the email female adapter on, and I tighten it down. It compresses the O ring against the back of the tank uh, to seal things so there can be no leaks. Everything's glued back there. Uh, some of it might be pressure fitted, but it, it, for the most part, it's glued. So as long as that o-ring seals against the back of the tank there's no leaks to worry about then inside the tanks is just a pressure fit for the standpipe which elbows up put the, to the height that i want the water to come up to and the screening above it over it to keep the fry from going down and that <clears throat> excuse me was my nursery setup oh and the cage that's over the uh grow beds is to keep this creature right here out of the grow beds um, and she's up on a stand but <laughs> at any rate that's my nursery system it worked great I sold uh, probably close to 2,500 fish I've got 400 that I was gonna or close to 500 that I was gonna keep in my system and I still currently have about 500 fingerlings that I need to uh, put an ad in Craigslist and sell off uh, I gave two batches to members of the uh, Sustainable Tech uh, forums through the Urban Farming Guys uh, setup, 
Uh, I said if anybody lived locally, I would give them 50. Uh, so two people actually responded, uh, came over, picked up 50, and then bought an additional 50 from me, uh, which was very nice of both of them. Um, but I've still got 500 I need to uh, start trying to get rid of. So the breeding system, it worked great. Everything stayed healthy uh, as long as I just kept maintaining the system. Uh, the plants acted as a filter, so I wasn't constantly spending money on filters. The only thing I really had to buy was something, uh, not going to show a label, but something to remove the chlorine from water. So when I needed to add a little bit, I could put a shot in it and then immediately add the, add the uh, water to the system. Now the beauty of this was since all of the water came out of this tank, even the water for all three of these tanks that I had, um, it was all the same water. So if I, I noticed a female had eggs, uh, carrying them around in her mouth, I would trap her, I would chase her with a net until she went into one of the pieces of PVC and then I had a couple of the uh, test caps the just they're basically flat just a little bit of an inward uh, push to them that I'd just stick my hands down in there I'd cap off the ends pull her back out move over to the nursery tank put it down in and let her go it worked perfect uh, I tried other methods and the females would spit out eggs and all kinds of other stuff and I'd lose batches of eggs or half a batch of eggs uh, and just a nightmare once I started chasing her to the pieces of the PVC and capping them completely so the female couldn't even see what was going on. I'd just gently move her over, put her down in, take the caps off, let her swim out, then I'd put the PVC back in the main tank, uh, leave her there till the eggs hatch, then I would just net her back out, throw her into the main tank, and leave the fry over there. Uh, it worked perfect, loved it. Uh, the best method for moving them, the females that I found, and since the, all the water was the same water just circulating through the system, constantly intermixing, it all maintained the same temperature so I could keep this tank at 70 or at, uh, 85 when I wanted them to breed. When I didn't want them to breed, I'd just turn off the temp temperature and let it drop down to whatever the house temperature was. Uh, I mean, it, tur it turned out to be a really good system. But to get up to this point, took a lot of experimentation, a lot of playing around with different methods that I saw on YouTube uh, until I got it plumbed the way that worked for me. Uh, so I hope this gives you an idea. You've got a solids lift overflow going to your grow beds, auto siphon down to your sumps, but at the same time, you're pumping a small amount of water over into your nursery tanks to keep circulation going there. And they just have overflow drains that go straight down back to your sump. So all the water is constantly flowing and mixing together, being aerated, being pumped back up. Um, it worked a treat. Uh, and I'd never had to buy any other filtration material. I could throw some mint in, let it go crazy. I've got some strawberry plants in here that are getting buried off from the light, so they're dying back, but because the mint's overgrown everything. Uh, but you, I had basil at one time, I had some parsley that did really good. Uh, the lights just didn't, so they kept getting leggy because of my lighting system. If you had some better lights, these are just aquarium bulbs. Uh, things might grow better. But at any rate, that was my breeding system, and it worked a treat. Loved it. So, uh, like I said, didn't have to spend money on charcoal or, or filters or change filters out, clean filters. And I never had to clean it. Solids lift overflow to the grow beds. There's worms in the grow beds to help break down the solids. Uh, through the water, pump back up. The only maintenance I had to do was clean the mesh screens over the overflows uh, to keep fry out every now and then some solids would get in the the supply tube and block a hole and I'd have to stick a piece of wire in or take it apart and clean the pipe out uh, but that was rarely other than that it was like I said once a week adding a little bit of water and uh, as long as I kept the temperature up uh, between 82 85 degrees they would breed uh, no problems mm. so uh, I hope that helps <laughs>